people who grew up in third world countries, what was the biggest shock for you when moving into a developed country? This will possibly get buried, but finally an ask reddit I can relate to. Toilet paper. Toilet paper everywhere. You don't have to bring your own to a public restroom because there's one in every stall here in America, and it's free. Restaurant service and food abundance. You asked for a medium well steak but was slightly overcooked. You send it back to the kitchen and you get a new one cooked for you, and the server even apologizes for it. Black people. White people. Asian people. People with natural red hair. In my 15 years living in a small town in Central America, I saw maybe two black people, a handful of white people, the one Chinese restaurant owner, and zero redheads. Now I get to see all kinds of people from all over the world, with different experiences and backgrounds. It's kinda neat. Just how much of my mind was previously occupied by machinations of keeping my family alive. Like always subconsciously running through the drill of what to do in the event of an armed hijacking or house break-in, and being super vigilant around people and in various places, no matter the time of day. I felt like at least 10% of my mental capacity has been freed up for other more productive thoughts like appreciating beauty and freedom, planning a prosperous future and trusting that the sense of security my family and I feel isn't just a ruse. When I was in the Marines I had a friend that was from extreme rural Africa. So we took him to 3D shows and such. He had been in the US for around 6 months but even things like TV was an amazing luxury to him. Someone in the group picked up one at a pawn shop off post and gave it to him and he was just amazed that someone would just give him a TV. Something nifty. He had it set up so direct deposits would go to an account his village had access to. His salary as an E2 in the Navy made his family semi-royalty in the village. I visited my cousins in the U.S. once. I was surprised that your houses don't have walls around them. There were only those fences at the side and back that pretty much anyone can jump over. Where I live the only houses who don't have walls surrounding them are those in compounds or subdivisions that have roaming security guards. Paid security guards not volunteers like the neighborhood watch kind of thing. Edit, to the people asking I'm from the Philippines but it's nice interesting to see that other countries carry this tradition practice. Edit, not really a wealthy family but not really a from dangerous neighborhood. It pretty standard here to have at least a 2 meter tall concrete walls if you have middle income but those poor ones just settle with barbed wire. TBH, as a child in a developed country I didn't get this either. Fences are practically decoration. And windows are so fragile. Anyone could break into a house if they wanted to. But there's police I guess, and usually the law will simply catch up with anyone who tries something like that in these countries. Edit, God Dane. You people like to talk about your fences. I meant they were, practically decoration, in terms of security. I understand they have other purposes as well. Thank you everyone for the upvotes. This is my highest post slash comment by far. Safety when walking on the streets during night. When in Brazil, I used to wait for my wife on the bus stop from college. As she usually left college around 2200 hours, it was dangerous. We used to live on a central zone, and her college was also central. In Ireland, if she leaves a party at 3 o'clock, I don't get concerned at all. So great to live without being afraid. It took us about one year to relax. This happens a lot in South America. I'm from Chile and is the same. We as women can walk at night alone. It's dangerous. How little theft there is. I was always told to always mind my bag and make it clear I'm holding it tight. Now I can freely leave it beside me, sometimes not even look. I've had friends leave a purse on a table in a restaurant and I made jokes about how easy it would be to steal it. Just a lot more relaxing in public due to less theft. Another one is how less physical fighting in schools there is. From a young age I was always told, if someone hits you, hit them back harder, but when we moved to UK my dad told me before my first day of school, if someone hits you, tell the teacher. Even from a poorer area in New Zealand to Australia, in the schools here, they leave their school bags outside the classroom. It's so strange. When I went to school we had our bag under our seat, between our feet if it wasn't actually being worn. That being said, every time I'm in a crowd I'm thankful for the basically non-existent pickpocketing and stuff. 
I am from the USA, but I am currently in South America. Back home there are couples where if one texts the other and they don't respond right away, they assume they don't like them or that they are cheating or something. Here if you text someone and they don't respond, you assume their phone was stolen. I am attending a wedding next week in Buenos Aires and I needed to tell the bride something. She didn't respond. After a couple of days I contacted her mother. Yep, phone stolen. Now she is trying to get in touch with people who are undoubtedly sending her messages. Ugh. Had that too, every time I go visit my home country I get a cheap phone as I know it'll get stolen. We even used to do this thing where you'd have two phones, your real one and a dud one that's super cheap to replace. If somebody tries to steal your phone, you give them the cheap one, but nowadays the thieves are catching on.